Thank first, just uh, really proud. I got the screensaver on the back of our, our all conference choices. Um, uh, appreciate D Scott, your positive energy toward uh, Nigel and uh, talking about him being first team and, and the, the, it came true and, and I think it was well-deserved. Um, I think we all would have been disappointed as a staff if he didn't get first team, but uh, pretty, pretty, uh, amazing what he what he accomplished and and I think even more we we talked as a staff just to to be most improved also it says a lot to be most improved and be first team uh is is a nice accomplishment so uh you know excited and happy for him I, I think also part of the story that you know with him he he didn't get to practice for four or five weeks I mean there was I we sat in the doctor's office back in uh you know, late September, early October, uh, and didn't know with his hip if, you know, if he'd even play the year. And now it not only plays the year, uh, but, you know, has, is, you know, is made himself into one of the better players in the, the Big 12. And then, you know, I really, as I said before, maybe one of the better players in the, in the country. And then uh, to have Mark do what he did, uh, is really, really special to, to lead the league at rebound, smallest player in history, uh, you know, to, to get third team all conference in, in a league that, you know, is, is it's pretty well factual. That's the best league in the country with really, really good players. Um, you know, so it's, uh, you know, really, really happy and, and proud of him. And then uh, part of that all newcomer team, which was, which was loaded, uh, there's no doubt. And then, you know, obviously Marquise, uh, you know, we said from the beginning he was going to be very dynamic on both ends of the court to be all defensive team and then receive some honorable mention all conference uh, from where he came from, you know, Little Rock to the summer to, you know, really trying to prove himself. I think it's, uh, you know, it's, again, each each story is unique and, and uh you know, really, really happy for those guys, their accomplishments. It's, it says a lot about them. So, uh, you know, injury wise, uh, you know, Marquise did participate a little bit yesterday. Uh, we'll have to see. We, we, we're coming back early today because we got to get on the road to get there uh, to, for shoot around this late afternoon. Uh, we'll see how he feels uh, after that. He, he seemed fine uh, at the time. Um, you know, the limited part we had him in there, uh, you know, probably need a good day today just to, so he, if he's going to play in the game that he can trust it. Um, you know, I think it's more, a lot of it's, you know, part he hasn't practiced in that for a week, but also the other part is the mental part to, to feel comfortable that you're going to go, you know, full speed and change direction. And so had a little bit issue with, uh, uh, Carlton's knee, um, you know, it's, it's been, that's been plagued us off and on all year. And, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, hopefully other than that, we're, we're okay. So. Thank you, coach. Thanks for mentioning the all conference. It's been a whirlwind. Uh, first we'll start with, uh, Karen. Hi coach. Sorry about my camera. For some reason it just blew out. So. Anyway, hope you can hear me. Can you hear me okay? Hello, hello, can you hear me? Hello? Just a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, a little. I, don't, I don't know what's wrong. I'll only ask one question. What is your message to the team coming to Kansas City? I mean, this is their time. This is this about the players. It's their time. Um, I said, you know, since we, yeah, I guess, whatever Sunday when we got together, um, don't let your self down and don't let your teammates down. And, uh, we have a, a, a good group. Um, they really care. Uh, I think if they didn't care, we probably wouldn't have survived all we've been through. Um, uh, and, and, and that's what I based it on you guys all year. You've cared, you love each other. You, uh, enjoy each other. Uh, you know, now don't, not only don't let your teammates down, but also don't let yourself down. You know, you don't get this opportunity very often. And uh, I mean, that's that's what we've talked about. They, they've had good energy. 
you know, we got together Sunday, lift weights, watch a little film. Yesterday, it was very positive. And, uh, you know, that's the most important thing. Thank you, Karen. Uh, next to Kellis. Is there such a thing as a uh, nothing to lose mentality from a coach? And if so, are you entering Kansas City with that this week? I mean, there, there's everything to lose. I mean, every time you lose a game, you you know, it's uh, it's it's you know, it's that's why you play. That's why you compete. That's why you coach. And so there's there's everything to lose. And and we you know, this is about the guys. This is about them to get a chance to, you know, maybe do something special. And it's you know. You know, you always hear it's March, baby. Anything can happen. So uh, that's that's the mentality we we're trying to do deal with, and hopefully our guys can uh, we can have some things go our way uh, and and play at a high level. It, but it's not going to be easy. West Virginia, both games were were close. Obviously, the one we were very very undermanned, um, you know, and and undercoached and undermanned. And uh, Jermaine did a great job, but it's it, you know. No practice, no, not enough players, and we still got it to you know where we had a shot at the end. Um, the game at, probably caught them off guard a little bit at their at their place. I'm sure they looked at the bench and warm ups, and you know it's like the the high level AAU team looks at the other one and they don't even have enough players to play, and and probably caught them. They you know, but we did we had a chance at the end. Game at our place. Uh, uh, watched it late last night again. Uh, you know, obviously Sherman was really good first half. Um, you know, we had, they had some other guys make some shots. Uh, and then, you know, we found a way in the second half to just keep coming at them. And uh, I think that's going to be the important thing. We, we have to be in attack mode the whole time because they obviously are, they're aggressive and, um, just came off a, a you know, really good win at TCU. Uh, Mike said something interesting after the game. He um, made it seem like he was just really disappointed that the defensive effort has, has slipped off over these last couple of games. Um, the offense seems to have been there. Well, what's the key to, you know, balancing that out and getting the defense back up where you need it? Um, you know, I, I think all everybody, just the communication. Uh, you always hear people as coaches, if you have a good talking team, usually you have a chance to be a good defensive team. And, and just, you know, getting to the right spots, uh, you know, and, and being on your toes. Uh, you know, we talked about attacking on offense, the same thing, attacking on defense. And, uh, you know, we, we have good possessions, but then we have we, – we slip and have, you know, bad possessions. And, you know, I, I told you guys, I mean, I showed it to – we've shown it to the players. I don't know what happened in that stretch. Um, Maybe it's maybe the whole season's taking a toll on our guys physically and mentally. I don't know, but uh, I hope they find it within themselves to come back and, and play at a high level uh, on, uh, on uh, tomorrow night. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Good luck out there. Thank you. Uh, next question to Todd. Coach, um, just I know that this is not your concern right now. You're are all in on basketball and what's going on in your game tomorrow in the tournament. But all the noise outside about your future and stuff like that. How do you separate that and keep it out of your program on, you know, your future with the with the university? I'll be honest, I don't even pay attention to any of it. You know, I just worry about being ready to, for the players and helping the players be ready. Uh, and that's all I focus on. And watching film, I was watching film at my wife said, what time was it? It was 420 this morning. So that's that's the most important part of that. I can't sleep very much during the season, but uh, uh, that's all I worry about. That's the most important thing. Uh, next question to Tim. Which one? <laughs> Fitzgerald, sorry. <laughs> okay. Coach, uh, I want to go back to Mark Smith, and um, you've known the guy a long time. How much has he evolved as a player this season, and what has he meant to you, not just as a player, but also his leadership that he came in with, uh, you know, just great attitude? Yeah, I think I received a, received a really early morning text message from his dad this morning, and 
And again, I, I almost weekly get something from his dad or mom and just in the appreciation um, for having this year to be in at K-State, to, to be, being part of our program. Uh, um, you know, I, I've said all along that, you know, his, he, he blended in. I, I, was a, I didn't know what was going to happen. But, you know, all three of those guys blended in. And, and Mark just, uh, I think I talked about it last week, you know, he, he just is happy every day. He comes in the office. He's, you know, watching film. He's talking to the coaches. He's uh, messing around with the players, you know, just. Uh, and when you have a good attitude, a positive attitude, um, good things happen for you. And he's got a, he's a, a very uh, devout Christian. He's got a strong faith. Um, you know, I, I think that's all part of it. Just being a good human being with a positive attitude and positive outlook on life and appreciating things. And, and when that happens, uh, good things happen to good people. And, and I can't be more happy for him. Um, you know, now we got to get him. I got to try to get him into some of those, uh, maybe Portsmouth or something like that. I think that would be the next step for him after, after this weekend, but uh, I hope he's, he was rewarded, obviously acknowledged on, on those uh, awards this week, and hopefully we can continue helping him uh, in his future. Thanks, Coach. Uh, next question to the other, Tim. <laughs> Bruce, how, how, how rare is it for a team going into the Big 12 tournament that, that's kind of had the the ups and downs and, and roller coaster that that you you guys have had to still be as 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 together as this team is and 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 to be as as resilient as it seems like these guys continue to be this this late in the run here. Uh, you know, I I don't know if it's rare or whatever. I just think again what I said earlier. It's a credit to our guys. Um, you know, they're it's about them and and what they've done since they arrived here in the summer as a as a group. Um, it really started in the spring with the returners. Uh, they're you know, but then everybody embracing each other and and really making a commitment to it. And obviously, we've had a lot of stuff happen. I mean, it's just you know, it's not excuses. It's facts. It's you know, a lot of things have happened. Um, you don't always understand in life. Uh, why? Uh, but you know these guys—they're uh, going to be better for it in the long run. I, I just—I just wish, I just hope and pray that they're rewarded this weekend with a with a good performance and something that they can feel really good about as as a group. And um, you know, I—I've I, been part of it before. Where you know, crazy things have happened and. and you know, I'm hoping that it happens again for these guys because they they deserve it. And then I, I know that you've been asked about about the NIT and you said that you guys would be interested. You guys are on the bubble of the NIT. If you guys don't make a run uh, in Kansas City, the other postseason tournaments, is that something that would also be looked into? Is, is that something you're also interested in, CBI, CTI? No, I, I don't think that would be, you know, part of it, but uh, – of the equation, but, you know, it's, um, you know, I, I think it's, you know, we're just hoping to make a little bit of run here and, and get some opportunity. So it would be great for them. Uh, that's the, to me, that would be, make me feel good. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, next question of Michael. Yeah, Bruce, you mentioned Carlton Lingard uh, previously as his, he prevented him from playing at all in the last few games it, it just kind of comes and goes um you know he he'll push himself and then he'll have some knee issues uh you know he uh he, he yesterday he couldn't even practice so uh you know it's just it's it's a tough thing i i feel bad for him i, I grabbed him the other, about a week ago and just said carlton we haven't forgot about you we really think you're you got great potential. Uh, I, I really do believe that. Um, I've said since the beginning, I've told you guys, I'm honest with him. You know, he, he needs off season. He needs summer. He needs, he's never had, I mean, he's never had a summer. He's never had a fall here at K-State. And, uh, you know, he's been thrown into games without really preparation and time to improve. And, you know, I, I just, uh, you know, a great young man, great attitude, 
And I just hope for his sake that he can have health and, uh, you know, in the, for his future and, and have a chance to really show what he's about. Because, I mean, you see it. He can run. He's got good foot footwork. He's got hands. Uh, he can shoot the basketball, uh, you know. And so it's just – but it's it's a matter of getting that, you know, that work, that offseason, and, and then really, you know, for him getting some confidence and then being competitive, you know, and – with you know, how do you become competitive? You got to have confidence to be competitive. So, I think that's the big thing. And with Mark Smith, it appeared I don't know how you might classify it. It, it looked like he maybe shrunk from the challenge in the Hall of Fame Classic, and has done a 180 since then. What kind of uh, is it? His advanced maturity that kind of stoked a fire within him. Just think it a new role, new team, figuring it out, uh, uh, you know, what, where he fit and, and how he could, you know, be successful and uh, just confidence. Uh, I think all of that stuff, it just kind of evolved as the season. That's what you, you know, you could, obviously people didn't see Mark last year in our league, but you, he could be one of the most improved players also. I, I don't think there's any doubt. People saw Nigel and, um, Obviously, he took Nigel took big steps on uh, numbers, but you know, Mark from the beginning to the end, I, I you know, he's made as much improvement as anybody. Just and, and part of his confidence in just figuring out where where he is and how he can fit in. But I think he can even get better. And that's stuff I told him yesterday. I said, Mark, you you know, you you can even get better. And he just just starting to learn the game and figure it out. And you know, that's that's. Uh, you know, I, I, I hope, and again, I hope for him and we're going to, we're going to be pulling for him and helping him all, you know, as he moves forward. And in what areas do you encourage uh, Selton Miguel to work on his game consistently? Uh, actually, I called him in yesterday and talked to him and I had a heart to heart and I love the young man, um, where, what he's come from to come over to the United States, not really speak English when he was young, almost by himself, his brother part of the time, um, you know, to learn our language, to figure out basketball. Um, now he's just got to really decide. And this is what I told him. I said, I, I love you, Selton. I, I, as much as anyone, he's probably had his difficult uh, coming to, I guess you could say coming to America, to, to all the things he's had to go through. But now he's got to really decide that, you know, he wants to uh, take big steps, you know, with his skill work. And uh, I use it, I asked him a couple of weeks ago, I said, who on Kansas would you like to be like? And I was hoping he'd say Abaji. And he said, well, I just want to be the best Selton. And, and I appreciate that. But, you know, I talked yesterday to him about Abaji, you know, Abaji redshirted or, or as a, the first part of freshman year and each year he's made giant strides and uh, and he started as a really good defender and then became a you know a good shooter and then now a all-around offensive player so that that's the kind of thing I've talked to Selton about and uh, you know he's got that chance to do that but he's got to really believe in it and really you know put the time and it's not easy obviously it you know, what, when guys have success, whether it's Obagi, Nigel, do you see the improvement? It's, it's cause they put the work in. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, we'll go to Wyatt. Morning coach. A uh, couple of questions, <clears throat> excuse me, about Nigel. Uh, tell me what you think might be his most undervalued skill. And then just kind of give me a sense of the improvement. Why in so many areas? What what did he do that's you know maybe stands out from from other guys? I think the biggest thing is when you say under undervalued skill is I think it's the the feel of the game, the understanding of the game. The you know I think I mentioned it last year when he got here, and and you know I kind of you know it's that Indiana that Hoosier you know under the, the, I don't know if it's coaching, how they're brought up. His dad obviously did a great job with him young, helping him learn how to shoot. Um, but that, that feel of the game is, is there for him. I, I, I don't have to tell him things or if I tell him something, it's one time, 
not not four or five, and he doesn't have to take a month to to see things. He sees it, uh, you know. And and I, I there's no doubt that's the big thing. Um, his improvement, you know. We talked last year. He was, you know, he he made shots. He actually, you know, had more on his t- plate last year because obviously Marquise has helped him, and the involvement of Mark and Selton and Mike, you know, it's it's you know has made it a little easier on him because. You know, last year he had to handle it. We had to run him off of screens. We had to, he had to, you know. So, but he, the thing we talked about was being able to make plays one on one, and that's what he's taking the most improvement on. You know, we'll get switches, and you know, I just watched West Virginia. He got the five man on him, boop boop, went by him, got a layup. You know, just uh, you know, next time, you know, got a, a forward on him, you know, step back. And and he didn't have that in his arsenal last year. And and now he's got it. And again, that's it's something from the spring we talked about. It was every day in the uh, end of our shooting workout. Uh, I always, you know, go make a play. That's what we called it. You know, go make a play. And that's what we had to work on. And um uh, and, and he's he, he's taken it to heart, and really improved, and I, I really think he can even get better. There's no doubt about that. And and finally, from me, I'm curious as to I'm not going to ask you who you voted for. That would be way unfair. But were you surprised that Scott Drew was the coach of the year? I've, I've been thinking about it, and I'm thinking he played the better half of 90 days without one of his best players, and another player missed 10 or 11 games, and two other guys were in and out. In some ways, it makes sense with all due respect to, to Mark. I was just curious as to what you thought about him winning coach of the year with all of that, plus what he lost from last year's team. I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, you know, one, they won another conference title. And that's, you know, beside uh, Coach Self and myself, we're the only ones in the last 10 years to win two. So, um, you know, that's impressive. And, you know, you know, Obviously, Scott's been in the league longer, uh, nearly 20 years or so, but, uh, you know, to do that. But I think the big thing is, you know, not only did he win a national championship last year, but he lost a lot of those guys and they're in the NBA and to come back. Uh, and he added some uh, really nice pieces. There's no doubt. But to get them to gel together and, and defend the way they do. And then then the deal when Chacha went out, I I thought they'd be a totally different team, but he's able to adjust again. So. Uh, There's a lot of guys that could have won the coach of the year. There's no doubt. Um, You know, Coach Adams is definitely, you know, somebody that should have been, you know, TJ at Iowa State did a great job. Uh, You know, you can, you can, even Jamie Dixon, you know, has done a nice, really nice job. So uh, got a great league, great coaches. And, uh, you know, just, you know, and I, and I, I hate, you know, I, I said many times, not last year, not the year before, the year before Scott Drew doesn't get enough credit for how good a coach he was. And, um, and I, I think it's, uh, you know, Cartier always said I was a prophet. So I guess maybe Cartier was uh, pretty smart. I don't know. Thanks coach. Any other questions for coach before we let him go? Thank you, Coach. I appreciate the time. We'll see you later in that day.